Level Up. We are in this series of Level Up. I don't know about y'all, but I am absolutely loving this series because we are hearing from, I'm going to say, the greats within our Juice Plus business. And, you know, every week I am, it's like I'm taking notes feverishly of capturing key phrases that they're saying, key ideas. I think last week, listening to Dr. David Phillips talk about performance, and we're going to hear more about that from um, today, but it, it started making me think of what customers within my customer base really want to hear about performance. And even if they're not athlete, athletes, big time athletes, who doesn't want to perform better? You know, I, I laugh at one point, Brenda told me that her walk, she does like 14 minute, five mile walks. Well, now suddenly I've got this goal of if I look down, if I'm not at 14, my, you know, 14 minutes in that 14 minute range, then I pick up my speed. So am I a big time athlete? No, but it, that just that thought made me think about my performance. And I think hearing these people talk week in and week out, what they're doing is giving us ideas to really share with our customers that will, will help them realize what they have in their hands with Juice Plus. We have, there is nothing out there like our Juice Plus, but do we communicate that effectively? And so we're going to, with y'all's permission, we're going to keep listening to these level ups. Thank you, Tamara, for recording them all. That's kind of a, co a covert operation we got going here. But what a beautiful thing to have these broke up each week. So thank you, Mara, for doing the legwork and, and gifting us with these level up um, week in and week out so that we can learn. And so... Today, we're going to hear from Jeff Olson. I'm not going to even tell you about him because I'm sure they will give you the details, but um, let me get us queued up and get going. Um. All right, well, I am honored to introduce this next man to you. He's one of the reasons why I finally said yes after 17 years. And he was the closing speaker at a conference. And, you know, I, I loved it. The products made sense to me after 17 years, you know, me with my I'm too cool syndrome. But I heard this man speak and he is crazy passionate about the towers as well and also about performance so right now we're going to bring on jeff olson and his career spans from professional sports to wall street to technology to health to, and all about human performance and he's the owner of the healthy living agency and ollie agency is co-founder of atlas forms he's got so much the guy is like brilliant if you like spend an hour with him you end up spending like five hours with him um, he is married to his wife, Tony, and they're the proud parents of three beautiful daughters. They live in Montana. Please help me welcome Jeff Olson. Give it up, Val. You're speaking to Jeff Olson. Yeah. Did you all have your shot of Ritz espresso? Right. <laughs> what I love about Stephen Ritz is he embodies a joy found in effort. If you can carry that in life, you've got game. Every time, you know, I, I've, I've followed him a few times and every time I follow Ritz, it's like, God, I'm just not playing big enough. Right. Does anyone feel that way? <laughs> Does anyone feel, you know, but at the end of the day, if that's kind of a bit overwhelming, you know, um, when all else fades away, you just got to get up and be a blessing, you know, one human at a time. You're one human a away from making a difference. So he's an absolute pioneer. And the thing about pioneers, if you look, if you look at the pioneering spirit, um, 
they embrace a call to adventure. And they don't think too much about all of the things that are going to go on, right? But they embrace a call to adventure. And the thing about pioneers, I'm from Montana. I live in pioneering country, live in the mountains, Yellowstone country, all that. Um, the thing about pioneers is they're captivated to explore new areas. That's fascinating to them. Childlike joy, right? A childlike sense of wonder. Explore new areas. They also, you know, want to go stake out new territory, right? And when they find a place, they want to claim new ground, right? Claim higher ground. Right. So we're going to shift from growing food to eating it uh, now. And when I was introduced to the Tower Garden, uh, I was captivated. I saw innovation. I saw the, the thing about innovation is you can see how it's going to play in the future. And I just saw growing food up in the world like that's going to be here. That's a timeless thing. That's not going away. Uh, and, and our company was ahead of the game, ahead of the curve. Right going to where the hockey puck is going, right? Not where it's been. I was captivated and I walked into a greenhouse and I saw this convergence of technology and beautiful food and then I tasted it and I'm just like, <clears throat> blown away. And then I went on an adventure. I got a call to adventure. I pioneered in my community. I took some bullet holes and skimmed my knee and said, no, 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 no. And then this is what happened. We launched a tower farm five years ago in Denver, Altius Farms. Altius is Latin for hire. Uh, and it's the largest vertical aeroponics rooftop farm in the country. And the cool thing, well, that's not even what you want to applaud for. This is what you want to applaud for. At least it fulfills me. Um, in, that, in that adventure, I wasn't expecting that. I, I met a veteran. And we partnered with uh, veterans to farmers. And um, um, totally unexpected. Um, veterans to farmers teaches and trains how to train protectors into providers. Right. I locked arms with a gunner a 16 year veteran and he was a gunner in the Iraq war. This guy killed things and he went from killing things to growing things. He went from destruction to creation. And the greenhouse was like a decompression chamber for him. And it allowed him to adapt and carry on and soldier on um, into civilian life. And so today, this morning, is an invitation to your pine, pioneering spirit. The thing about innovation, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of innovation. Um, what I want to speak to now is innovation that makes new things that makes old things obsolete. That's not the Tower Garden innovation. That kind of innovation is innovation that makes new things that just gives you a cool, art, cool, art, cool alternative. How cool is just growing food up? I, I, was, I was taking a, a group of kids through uh, the farm. We were, we were, uh, it's, in a, it's in a food desert in Denver, and these kids were coming through, and he's like, dude, that's cool. That's like the iPad of farming. I was like, can we trademark that? That's pretty cool. Like the iPad of farming, right? It's just beauty, form, function, simplicity, easy, fun. And a lot of kids in that urban community now want to come work at that farm. How cool is that? And shifting gears from the growing of it to how it gets in the human body, my wheelhouse is how, at least I've been a student of the game. I, I'm not a health professional, but I've been a student of the game for 40 years. 15 of us are a professional athlete. And if, that, if professional athletes are anything, they're ruthlessly practical. They're always looking for what works. They're always looking for a competitive advantage. They're always looking for an incremental gain because you, you, you take a tiny little incremental gain and you 
play that out over time, that becomes a competitive advantage. And so I have a sort of a tagline as human performance in all of us. And if performance puts you off, I'm not an athlete. Here's the thing. Athletes are apathetic about eating plants because they don't understand how it helps their performance. I'm gonna unpackage that just real quick. I'm gonna bring up my colleague, Dr. Dave here, and we're gonna have a little fun because he and I have been in this game for a long time. And we've been waiting kind of 10 years to have this conversation around performance, right? This is exciting day for Dave and I. But, but non-athletes are apathetic about performance because they don't understand how it impacts their health. You with me? Human performance in all of us. And performance is just replace it with a word that you like. Gain, optimize, result, advance, improvement, level up. It's just you're here and you want to go just a little better. Like that's performance. It's a result. When I was introduced to this company, I didn't have a health problem. Let me be very clear. I didn't have an ailment. There's a lot of people who do that are seeking, searching, asking, hunting, but I didn't. I was looking for an advantage. And we as a company, we can walk and chew gum at the same time because we offer people with ailments something to consider, and we offer people looking for an advantage something to consider. And this is a, the best example of human performance I can think of is pregnancy. That's human performance. I know there's people out there today listening that are diabetic. They're struggling with an ailment. They're looking for some more gain. They're being challenged by their friend group because they're trying to take on a healthier lifestyle. You want to know what the most correlated thing to health is? It's zip code. It's who you hang with, who you roll with. This community, if you're looking for a community that has got some game around healthy living, you know, you might want to aspire. Big difference between inspiration. Did you get inspired by Stephen Ritz? I want to make the distinction between being inspired and have you aspire, A-S-P-I-R-E. Mentor of mine told me long ago, inspiration is for amateurs. And we're all amateurs <laughs> in the game of life. We're all athletes in the game of life. And what's the game? The game is meaning, impact, love, contribution, fulfillment, giving back, paying it forward, leaving the world a better place when you roll into the next one, the next chapter. Inspiration is for amateurs. What pros do is they aspire when no one is there. When the whispers and the trolls and the things start coming in, do I aspire? Do I aspire? And so, who am I looking at here? Could be Michael Phelps. Could be one of my daughters. Could be a pregnant woman. Could be a smoker. Could be a diabetic to type A personality, type two, but you know, whoever, right? This is a universal narrative because when you go inside the human condition, deep under the hood of us, of all of us, we're more alike than we are different. And what brings this thing to life is pray well, love well, eat well, sleep well, move well, all of that lifestyle stuff. And in the eat well bucket, right? We have a conversation in our country. Predominantly, where do I point this? Predominantly around healthcare and your health, right? And so think of physiology as a spectrum from one to 10. Physiology has 10 letters in it, one to 10. You can write this down if you're taking notes. And on the left side of that spectrum is breaking bad, body bad, something's wrong, poor. And then you have chronicity and chronic something or an ailment. And it's a, you know, the physiology is in a fragile state and the healing process. And then you get back to homeostasis. And what's homeostasis? Homeostasis is what in the 20th century and in the first, couple, maybe first decade of the 21st century, you know, health, it's the absence of disease. Are you kidding me? That's like the most pathetic definition of health. I can think like the absence of disease. Are you kidding me? 
That's just half of the spectrum. Our whole healthcare system is designed health in the absence of disease and to get you back to stasis, right? And then I'm good, carry on. And then there's the rest of your life. And what you want in the rest of your life is physiological durability. When I was an athlete, I wanted to be a Ferrari. Now I want to be a truck. <laughs> and I want to go hard, play hard, work hard, get up every day and roll and have resilience. And you'll be held accountable by the rules of the game you choose to play. And in the world of healthy lifestyle, there's first principles. And when it comes to first principles, someone said this last to me last week, and I said, I said, this is brilliant. They're like, produce, fruits and vegetables, that's like the nutritional equivalent of gravity. You, you know, you want to you apply first principles, fruits and vegetables, nutrient-dense foods. You heard Dr. Roberti talk about nutrient density, where the majesty of whole food kicks in, right? Now, in this spectrum, we have, as a, as a father of three daughters, we have moms in, in the audience, and moms will understand that protective in instinct, that mama bear, right? You'll throw yourselves in front of a bus to protect your tribe. And for men, it's warrior kind of providing and protecting as well. But moms, look, you also want to have mojo, right? You want to get your sexy back. You want to have, you want to be captivating, right? And so across this spectrum, if you go inside nutrient-dense foods, deep under the hood, deep inside you, it's way beyond macros. Macros captivates our culture, captivates 99% of the conversation. And if you think of your you are this iceberg, you're an like the analogy is the iceberg and, and what's above the water is what everyone sees externally in you, your weight, your, your muscles, your, your joie de vivre, your twinkle in your eye, the bounce in your step. But what goes on deep inside you is you really at the end of the day. And ma macro and micro, talking about beyond micros, We've been pioneering for 30 years. You're going to hear later one of the OGs who was at the forefront, Mark Ledoux, who was at the forefront of taking micronutrition and concentrating it, right? Pioneer, call to adventure, innovator. Macros, few and build. Carbs, proteins, fats, calories, in and out. But what do micros do? First principle, fueling, building. And our culture is fascinated with those two conversations. Are you with me? The third conversation is a conversation that's playing out right now in elite athletics and in, in professional athletics at, at, at the tip of the spear of the best in the world. And what that is, is micronutrition conditions physiology, primes it, trains it, whatever word you want to use. Something's going on in the biochemistry of all that. In the 20th century, we understood it as vitamins and minerals. There's no calories in micronutrition. It doesn't mean it's not important. It's, 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 this is the greatest biotechnology plant available to you. This is nature's AI. And AI is adaptive intelligence. You put this biochemistry in you and the body understands how to synthesize it and deal with it and orchestrate it into something that produces an effect in you. And in the 20th century, we understood it as vitamins and minerals. And that's like black and white TV, right? But now 20 years on, 30 years on, We've been talking about phytonutrients and phytochemicals for 25 years as a company. And 25 years ago, like, what's that? Now the world's kind of caught up. It's cool. Like, we need to get more of this matter that matters in the human condition. That's our game, right? Talk about it. Where's vitamin C in that picture? It exists in symphony of all the other stuff it's surrounded by. And that's the difference between an isolated, fragmented, compartmentalized conversation or holistic, networked, plant food conversation. And so... If you look at how, okay, so if athletes are anything, they're on the field of play and they're into execution and nutrition is only as good as your execution every day, over time, period. Everything else is cocktail talk. So these are the recommended minimum servings a day of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet, fruits and vegetables and berries. Five is the recommended minimum for homeostasis the prevention of disease. And if you just want that, look in the mirror, tell me how you're doing every day over time. If you want more game, if you want, dur I want 
physiological durability, resilience, the adaptive response. For athletes, this can mean greater recovery. For you, it's restoration, rejuvenation, reclamation of all of this matter, right? Seven servings a day, nine servings a day. If you're a hardcore athlete training hard, if you're going pro, <laughs> it's double digit. And this is where David and I get really excited. This, here's the problem. The inconvenient truth in our culture is 90% fail to get five. This is why we're on the field of play that we are on. It's good work. It's meaningful work. And there's a lot of shiny things in the world. We need to bring sexy back to fruits and vegetables and getting more of that stuff in the human body. And so the cool thing about it, this is where daily habits kick in. And who doesn't want higher health and deeper level of performance? This is going on all over the world. So this is at the elite athlete level, at the chronic disease level, at the wellness level, across the whole spectrum. What we're, what we're beginning to understand is all of that biochemistry in the body over time. It's just like Lewis and Clark discovery. We're just discovering more molecules, more, and now what science is doing is like, we used to study these things in isolation. Now there's a whole new field of science called network physiology. It's like, how do these 3D, it's like three dimensional chess. How does all this work together to impact this system and this system and this molecule and this organelle and these atoms and this electron and right? Cause it all, it's got to all stack up. And this is the pioneering frontier of sports nutrition right now. I will tell you the international Olympic committee uh, asked the, uh, some of the doctors and the athletes on the Game Changers movie and some of the exercise scientists to produce a manual for the International Olympic Committee, for the International Olympic Committee to send out to all the elite national Olympic committees around the world because their athletes were coming to the administrators and say, tell me more about eating plants. Tell me how it helps my performance. I need more game. I want that competitive advantage. I'm seeing it. I'm believing it. I understand my athletes are more durable. You look at all the goats in sport. Most of them are eating predominantly plants. All right. So how do we get the farm to you, right? That's our game. How do we get the farm in you? And I got this from David, wherever David is. I'm going to bring him up in just a minute. This is a food first approach. Talk about a, a, a kind of a paradigm shift versus a not food based approach and the not food based approach is the poster child is the multivitamin and it's the nutritional equivalent of the minimum wage i think you want more game than that so what our company has innovated and and the lane that they have stayed in for 30 years is daily plant food support is that a vitamin pill no it's plant matter it's matter that matters they've been pioneer and innovator a leader best in class across fruit powders vegetable powders berry powders, more recently, plant omegas. And the invitation is for you to adapt. This train's left the station. The invitation is for you to catch up, right? 100% plants, vegan, QC testing, it's safe. It's being used in utero with high-risk pregnancies, the best athletes in the world, surviving and thriving cancer patients. It's one of the safest things, cleanest things you're gonna put in your body every day. What part of this don't you get? The fruit and vegetable part? the plant powder part, where people get wrapped around the axle is the encapsulation part. Here's the competitive advantage of encapsulation. Three things to great food, time, heat, oxygen. This gives it an oxygen barrier. Do you want that? Yes, because oxygen, oxygen degrades food. You cut a banana, starts to oxidize and turn brown. Protection of those vital nutrients. But the other thing, the probably most powerful thing, the reason that these things have done 10 plus billion dollars in sales, little itty bitty fruit and vegetables. This ain't an experiment, okay? <laughs> we know the game. The reason is because it's easy to do every day. It's easy to execute. It's, it's, it's just easy to do, therefore people do it. Physicians, David Phillips call that compliance. Here's the science, compliance, right? And so the lane that this company has stayed in is one of the premier functional food companies in the world, if not the goat. Their lane, their franchise, plant powders, fruit and vegetable powders, plant powder shakes is a new breakfast. Who knew you could get omegas three, five, six, seven, and nine out of plants? Are you kidding me? Bypass the middle fish, more sustainable, good for the environment, all that. So I could go on and on. Let me wrap up with this. These are my ladies. All my ladies were babies when we got into this adventure. 
They've been pounding plant powders with mom and dad for 20 years. Compounding effect. Mama is a nurturer, a caregiver. Daddy wants my daughter to have game and go crush. There's caring and there's crushing. You can do both. We can be both, right? Survive and thrive. These are the dance in the brain, right? This is what we have to offer as a company. So with that, I want to bring up a kind of a mentor of mine. He doesn't know it, but I have watched this guy for 50 minutes. And 